so if you think about it, right, you guys are in a great place because you guys are just kind of, I call it at the very beginning of your lives still, right? You, technically, you're still all on your parents' payroll, right? Last time I checked. Maybe a little bit of assistant one way or another, right? Enjoy it, right? Because guess what? 90% of us will end up probably doing something that we really don't enjoy, right? Because that's working for the man, right? So hopefully you guys will take this little competition a little seriously because you got about you know, a few years here to figure out who your friends are, who guys that can help you guys create that one buzzword called synergy. Synergy doesn't mean showing up late to the meetings and I have nothing to contribute. Don't be that guy, okay? Because eventually people are gonna find out that you are that lazy one and you're gonna be in the back of the bus, okay? So be the person that brings something of meaning, you know, an idea, anything, that together you guys can either make it better or get rid of it because it is a bad idea after all, okay? So we were a bunch of kids, think of it, right? Asian kids from Brazil in Orange County in 1975. You talk about being the man out. All three of us were at different schools. At one point, two of us were at the same school. Ed and I were actually at the same high school for about a year. But most of the time, we were it. And the one thing that drove me crazy is, because we all look alike, right? They would try to put me with other Asian kids because they thought I could speak Vietnamese or Korean or Japanese. And I'm gonna tell you, Portuguese is nothing like any of those languages. And Chinese and Japanese and Korean are also all completely different, okay? So man out, and I have to figure out how to, you know, how do I try to fit in? Luckily for us, being close to the beaches, the cool kids surfed and skateboarded, right? Well, if you're 14 years old and you've never skateboarded in your life, skateboarding is not that easy to learn. Surfing, on the other hand, relatively speaking, a little easier if you can swim, because if you fall, you fall in soft water. So that's what I opted to do, okay? So we were trying to fit in, do all this, but in order to basically fit in to the action sports industry as we know it today. Today they call it lifestyle, okay? Here's the, the credentials you have to have. You have to have been, been a former top amateur, top pro, or best friends with one of them. If you weren't any of those three, the option of you trying to get into the action sports industry is zero and none. Because the only way you can sell a pair of Billabong, Quicksilver, Volcom, any of these brands, shorts and t-shirts, the guy at the shop wants to hear about how cool it was when you were surfing pipeline in Hawaii, it was 20 feet overhead, and how you got barreled and all the stuff and he almost got killed. If you can't tell that story, they're not interested in buying anything you have to sell. Because the only way you can sell a brand is if you can actually talk about what the brand represents. Did you surf? Did you snowboard? Did you skateboard? If you didn't do any of these, I'm sorry. Your college degree is awesome, but I'm not interested. I'm interested in about how you almost died going off that cliff, okay? So what was the option for us? We have been in the restaurant industry our whole lives. So that's what we opted to do. So when you look at your strengths and weaknesses, right? I joke about all these kids that want to be doctors, right? They think it's a great option. And I looked at him and goes, do you enjoy chemistry? Do you love physics? Do you love calculus? If the answer is no, don't go there because you got to get through that before you even get into med school. And they're like, you're kidding. I go, no. So if you think about it, right, like what are your strengths and weaknesses in business, right? Some of you are very precise. Accounting, right? Some of you are creative, maybe finance. Some of you are BSers, marketing, right? So that's what you got to figure out, okay? So in our strengths and weakness analysis when we were young and getting out of college, well, I did my little tour of corporate America for a little bit and I figured out, I goes, hey, you know what? Going to work nine to five every day is not that much fun. Commuting to LA is even worse. And the thing is, the job never changed. It's like that movie Groundhog's Day. Every day was like paperwork. And I'm like, when is this assignment gonna change? When is this class gonna end and I'm gonna get a new teacher? And I looked around at Rockwell International on the space shuttle program, and my entire department had been there over 25 years. 
pushing paper contracts. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Imagine going to that English class every day, write a thesis on why such and such thing happened, right? And you'll be going crazy. So think about that for a second, right? Working at the post office, what do you think that looks like? Envelopes, envelopes, right? Think about all these jobs that people have. I'm not putting any of them down. My father-in-law was a mailman. And I'm like, but how can you do that? Right? But there was a different time. Back then, people were very happy working in an assembly line. Well, guess what? You don't have that choice anymore because those jobs don't exist anymore. It's all robots, right? It used to be really cool to be a programmer, write code. Guess what? Unless you move to India, India, you can't have that job either, right? So all of these jobs that existed in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s no longer existed, right? Or I was in a situation where like, I can't do this for another 30 years. So I looked around, <clears throat> and I wish I would have had more access to things like this when I was in college, because I would have checked a lot of the boxes off. So your job is not to figure out what you want to do for the next 50 years. Your job today, your assignment, is to figure out what you don't want to do for the next 50 years. It'd be a lot easier. Because when you start checking all the little, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that, you're going to get to the one day, hmm, this is actually kind of fun. It doesn't feel like work, right? Does this look like a uniform to you? This is what I go to work every day. And I, all my friends know, do not ask Wing what the attire for the event tonight is. Because this is my business attire, right? And I go to plenty of events, and people are like, this guy's wearing shorts. I'm like, that's what he goes to work in. That is his business attire. It's not that I just pretend like I'm at the beach, but I do. I mean, my restaurant, that to me is my little space, and that's my little office, right? So think about that for a second. So as you're going through this, right, and I wish I had all night to talk to you guys, because I can tell you a gazillion stories about everything, right? What are the secrets, right? What we did restaurants it's not rocket science there are plenty of new restaurants and there are plenty of restaurants that are not here anymore what we have done in 30 years we figured out one thing we know how to make something better and here's I'll tell you the story what we did 30 years ago we're doing it again right now in a different world so I'll go 30 years back if you look at a action sports event in 1988 what did it look like <clears throat> your parents, if you're lucky enough, made your brown bag lunch the night before the event. The problem is, whatever they made, I can just joke about it, Oscar Mario bologna, white bread, <clears throat> a soda pop, and a fruit. They put it all in the refrigerator, but the thing that they, nobody ever thought of, why would they make a soft sandwich, put it on the bottom, put a can of pop on top of it, and throw an apple on top of it? So guess what you did? You spent all day surfing, your brains out, skateboarding, snowboarding, whatever you did. And when you got off the competition, you were rewarded with a soggy, spongy ugh, sandwich. And if you're lucky enough to be vegetarian, you got a version made with peanut butter and jelly, okay? I came into the picture, I'm like, why this? Why don't they do what they do at a tailgate after the Rose Bowl? Because I used to go to those when I was in college. And there'd be a guy there carving turkey, a guy carving prime rib, a guy sauteing scampi. Well, guess what? Football has a ginormous budget to entertain alumni. Surfing, it's all the sports that none of the real athletes can participate in. That's why they're surfing. They can't play football. They can't play basketball. Not true today, right? It's going to be in the Olympics. It's a real sport by some standards, right? So that was the budget. Now imagine me showing up on the beach, pushing this 100 pound grill with a little backpack and I'd be serving what you guys are having here, but I'm actually cooking on the beach. Cooking fish, cooking steak, grilling tortillas, scooping rice and beans, giving chips and salsa. What was the alternative to that? Soggy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, soggy Oscar Mayer bologna sandwiches. There was no competition. Why didn't anybody else do it? Because nobody was either smart enough or dumb enough to do what I did. So we basically became an integral part of the sport. So the first snowboard kid that I met when he was six years old was Sean White. 
I can see Sean White anywhere in the world. I can literally smack him upside the head because I fed that kid over 100 times. Tony Hawk, Kelly, say, you name an action sports guy at the X Games, winter, summer, any of these sports. And I probably fed that kid 50 to 100 times, right? So that was then. You think history doesn't repeat itself? So about 10 years ago, uh, when you get a little bit older, you go from quantity to quality. So instead of just drinking you know, a lot of beer and some of these things you know, when you're out having fun, you start enjoying the finer things in life, wines. Because you learn to appreciate, and trust me, in general, wine tastes like crap, right? It's, it tastes like rotten grapes to me, right? But you learn to actually appreciate it just like you learn because it's a fine thing to do when you're eating. And I started going up to the wine country, and I noticed the same thing. I'm like, why do these people let you sample all this wine and they don't give you anything to eat? There's a reason why. They're in the business of selling wines and not feeding you. So there's this theory that the more tipsy you are drinking wine, the greater the idea that you think buying a case of it is, is, should be a really good idea to take home with you. Most of the time, that's not true. The, buy, the wine that you taste in that moment is awesome. It's not worthy buying a case to bring home. Because then you come home and like, what do we buy this thing for? This is the worst wine ever. But in that moment, you drink. And you buy wines because you're having fun, you're being very social, and all your friends go, oh my God, we should get some of this for our next dinner at the house. So I asked the same question. Why do you guys do this? Because we want you to get a little tipsy so you buy more wines. So winery after winery, you get crackers, and you're drinking two or three glasses of wine. Because after two or three wineries, you're like, we got to stop somewhere and eat our face off because we're a little you know, over the edge, right? So you stop at this wonderful burger place in Sonoma called Gots. And I'm going to tell you, how can two people spend $100 buying burgers? I'll tell you how. You buy two burgers, you buy two truffle fries, you buy two pokey tacos, you buy two milkshakes, you buy two of everything because it's a great idea. Because you got the munchies, right? <laughs> and you come home the next day and go, oh my god, I just put on five pounds. And look at my bill. I bought what? I would never drink a milkshake in my regular state. I never, because one, I'm a little lactose intolerant, I'm not supposed to drink those shakes. But at three in the afternoon, it sounded like a great idea. And not to mention that that pound of you know, truffle fries was a great idea too, because why do we need all that? So I came up with the same idea. So I started meeting some of these winemakers. It was, what if you had a guy like me come and do an event with you guys? So when you have your members to the wine club come and pick up their wines, wouldn't it be nice to have, you know, Pinot, Cabernet, Chardonnay in a taco station? And they're like, you're crazy, but go for it. So just like we did with the Action Sports brand, I didn't just pick up any winery. I picked up the best winery in the world that year, in 2011. Okay, they have this prestigious award called Wine Spectator's Top 100. They were number one. Once we did that, all the other wineries goes, what's up with that? You're good enough to do it with them, you should do it with us. Today, I have literally about a dozen wineries. It's all the who's who in the world. They're all based in Sonoma and Napa. And my friends are like, how in the hell did you do that? I goes, I did exactly what I did 30 years ago. I took something that was already good, I just made it better. So when you're thinking of your product, it doesn't have to be rocket science. All these apps, all these techno things, great. But unless you're a great programmer or you're best friends with one, it's never going to work because that'll be their biggest overhead is creating the actual coding. What you got to do is find something that makes things better. I love this little stupid thing, right? <laughs> Who came up with it, right? It was 100 grand that a couple guys put together and people love it. These guys are worth millions, right? And that's just one guy. The other guy who does the actual the case, right? Mofi, Incipio, all these guys. I mean, that's another racket, right? Why didn't Apple just make the case for it? I have no idea. Because Apple was too busy making the cords and everything else to charge you a bunch of money, right? Every, change, every time they change the model, right? So these are the things that to me crack me up. Some of it, yes, it's super technical. Some of them are like, really? That's all they did? So there's plenty of things out there. Like restaurants, it's not rocket science. But as long as you can make it better, people are gonna go, why? Why not? So our deal, a little healthier not too expensive, right? And 
it kind of fits, you know, because everybody that you've ever idolized in the action sports space eats our food. We serve our food at the U.S. Open of Surfing. We serve our food at the Winter and Summer X Games. And guess what? Unlike Taco Bell that has to spend millions of dollars to sponsor the event, those brands actually pay us to serve food there. How crazy is that, right? So that's what I do, right? It's not rocket science. It's having guys come together. And you guys together, you can create some crazy ideas because all you got to do is like, why not? And if you can find an answer, don't do it because there's a reason why nobody's doing it. But if you can, give it a try. And if you can make whatever better than it was before, chances are people are going to buy it, right? Because you look at anything that's out there, you go, God, who came up with that stupid idea? That's what people thought of me. Who's the stupid Asian guy making fish tacos, right? And guess what? 30 years later, I get to travel the world. I get to hang out. I get to do all the coolest things. You name it. I've been on stage with just about every band, Green Day, Dave Matthews. You know, I have all these friends in this network. And the, the common denominator, we all make things better, right? So it doesn't have to be rocket science. It just needs to be better than how you started, right? So do take this competition a little serious. There is some money for grabs, right? And I might even be back to help judge some of this stuff. But because we'll look at it and go, hmm, bad idea, because you don't need it. That but that's our job, right? But it's OK, because if you look at some of the best things that have ever come out, Right? And they'll tell you, we failed 50 times before we hit that home run. Right? Luckily for us, Wahoo's worked out very nicely the first time out. But I can tell you, along the way, our little coffee house idea was a bad idea. Some of the other restaurant things that we tried to help our friends, some of them worked out, some of them didn't work out. Right? So not everything works out. A 90% failure rate in almost everything that we're going to do. Right? Otherwise, you guys all be your own bosses tomorrow. Okay? So don't be afraid. Don't let a bunch of us naysayers, unless we can say for a good reason why something isn't going to work, don't take it from us. You may just have to tweak it. That's all you're going to have to do. Other than that, I have a three-year-old waiting for me. I've got to go take Santa's Claus baby pictures tonight for the fourth time in the last two weeks. I'm going crazy with Santa Claus pictures. But I'll be around. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email the guys. And I'd be happy to assist you. Uh, you can share my email if you have questions. And I am taking a sabbatical from teaching here. I teach in the MBA school here for fun. Because this is like, I love knocking you guys around. But it, it's fun. Because you know what? If I don't do it now, when you can fall relatively soft, when you're 30 and 40, and whatever crazy career you thought was a great idea, and somebody didn't tell you what the other options were, I don't want you to be looking around for a career change in mid when you have a kid, a house, all these other crazy things. And I can't tell you how many of my college friends had to do it in their 40s and 50s. And that is not a good place to do a career change. Do it right now when you have a lot more options. All right? So thank you, guys. I'll see you guys soon.